Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Video Adrenaline, where today we're going to be exploring the interaction between Adobe Photoshop and After Effects. We've got a great technique for you today called the Puppet Tool, which lets us selectively warp an image. But before we can warp it in After Effects to create an animation, we have to prep the file in Photoshop. Let's get started. I've got an image here, and what I'm going to do is create some video out of this actual monkey footage. Now, this is just a still image, and let's go ahead and get the monkey on its own layer to begin with. I'm going to duplicate this, and we'll call this layer monkey foreground, and this will be the background. Let's start with the foreground layer. Grab our quick selection tool. It's located here with the magic wand, quick selection, and drag through to start to create a selection. It'll automatically detect edges to sort of help you out a bit. If you get something you don't want, you can hold down the Alt key to subtract. So I'll pull a little bit out here. Or the Option key on a Mac. And that's a pretty decent starting point for the selection. Let's just get a little more there at the edge. And we'll then click the Refine Edge button. Now this brings up the Refine Edge dialog box, and there's a lot that happens here. In Photoshop CS5, this got immensely improved, especially for things like hair and fine edges. Let's go ahead and turn on Smart Radius, and we'll adjust that edge. And if I zoom in here, you could really see this. Look at what a great job it's doing there, detecting the hair. You could paint over the edge that you wanted to analyze, or option paint to remove that from the selection. But this works really nicely, letting you create a good transition zone where the hair and the background intercede. We can go ahead and smooth that edge out a little bit, and even feather it if necessary. And using the shift, you could pull that in or out. Now in this case, I want to view this over black, making it a little bit easier to see what's happening with the hair edges. That's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and smooth that just a bit more. And I think that looks good. What I'm going to do is output that to a layer mask and click OK. Now the monkey is on his own layer. Of course, he's still on the background, and I want to get rid of that. So let's go ahead and command click or control click on a PC for the mask to load it, and then we'll select the background layer. Got a decent selection there. We'll just expand that out. Let's go 30 pixels. And we'll press Shift Delete to bring up the fill dialog box and choose Content Aware. What this does is analyze the background and attempt to create a new texture to fill in the hole. Thinks for a moment. And did a pretty good job. Now it's not perfect, but if we zoom in here, this is a quick touch up. S for clone stamp tool. We'll just fill that in a little bit. And a little bit of cloning will go ahead and solve this and make it good. It doesn't have to be perfect either. There we go. So remember, the monkey is still going to be sitting on top. We just need to fill in the gaps in the background more or less. And the content aware is not pure magic, but it really jump starts the process of how much work you have to do to fill things in. Looking pretty good. There we go. Okay. Now remember, you don't need sheer perfection, just enough to sort of fill in that space behind the monkey, and we're just about there. There we go. Now, if you want to spend more time on your picture, go ahead, but I'm going to jump forward because you guys aren't watching the show to watch me do cloning, but it's good enough. We're going to go ahead and save that. 
Looks good there. And we'll jump on into After Effects. Let's bring that in. There's our layer. We'll bring this in as a composition. I'll do retain layer sizes in this case. Double click the comp to load it, grab the monkey layer, and come up on top and grab the puppet tool. Now it's right here with the little pins. And what you're going to do is click to define where you want the object to move or bend. Okay? And then you can grab some starch to actually click and define where it stays static. There we go. If you twirl this open, you'll see all of those meshes applied. Let's go to stiffness there. And we'll increase that extent and the amount. And you see that the area essentially becomes frozen. I'll get rid of that one on the shoulder. I'll let that bend. But we'll grab these other here and adjust the extent and the amount. And what we're doing is we're creating basically a freeze zone. And you could reposition those as needed to move them around quite simply. There we go. And now the bottom of the monkey should remain stationary. Up top here we have a couple of control pins. And if I grab the puppet tool, I can now bend and move things. And you see how the image actually sort of moves. Now don't completely distort it. But the really cool thing here is not just dragging and bending, but doing it in animation. So we've got our monkey. I hold down the command key and we get a little clock icon right next to the keyframe there. And now I have motion sketch. So over time, we can bend him and move him around, and he'll actually move in the scene, getting nice, gentle motion. There we go. And if we play that, we'll see how the picture sort of bends and warps. And these are just keyframes. So you can use tools like the smoother to reduce the number of keyframes, or select them and expand them or contract them to speed up or slow down the animation. So it works very well. And you see the area that we froze remains stiff. At this point, I'd simply go ahead and change my composition settings. Let's set this to HD for TV. Take both layers and we'll add a new layer. Just a null object. We can go ahead and parent those two other objects to the null. And now, using scale and anchor point on the null object, we can easily zoom and pan. So let's start zoomed in tight on the monkey there. I'll adjust the anchor point just a little bit to frame the shot. And then over the course of the shot, while he's doing some gentle moves, we're going to scale back to reveal a little more of the scene and sort of pan a bit. And you really want that to look good. Click on the word scale and choose keyframe assistant exponential scale. When you do that, you get a nice curve, a nice ballistic curve to the zoom and it looks a lot better than a simple mathematical zoom. Let's zoom that up a little bit and hit preview. So there you have it. We use Photoshop and After Effects to essentially create footage out of a single still photo. Great tools in Photoshop for extracting. Be sure to check out that Refine Edge command, as well as the Content Aware Fill to quickly split a photo into multiple layers. Then jump on into After Effects where you can use tools like the Puppet tool to warp objects over time. Really cool stuff and it's going to open up some new options for documentary storytelling or even commercial spots. For Creative Kyle, my name's Rich Harrington. <laughs>